Hey everybody, Kevin Barnett back in the Carbide 3D Studio with another long form video. With these, we want to take you from blank page all the way to machine ready. A lot of tips and tricks along the way to increase your skills. In this one, we're going to import an image. I'm going to show you how to utilize the all powerful node editor. Then we're going to move on to layers and machine by layer and show you why those can be some time saving features. Remember these videos are chapterized to allow you to select the portion that is most useful to you. It's a lot of time in the software. Let's get started. We begin inside Carbide Create with our 12 by 12 piece of stock. We've identified this inside of our job setup. If you have problems working in millimeters or inches, you can select either inside of the job setup. You also can type in the opposite measurement system utilizing the expression editor. Inside of a millimeters defined or a metrically defined job setup, I can put in one, two for 12 IN inches Hit equals and it will give me the equivalent number converted into millimeters. You can do this in millimeters or in inches. Insert the other value, hit equals, and it will convert it for you. This is throughout the program. Our thickness is exactly defined. 2.68 millimeters. I measured with calipers. I took it out to the 100th position. And that is always important when you're doing cutouts or cut throughs. Measure accurately. It makes a big difference. Buy a bunch of calipers. They're cheap. Put them all around your shop and your design space. All right, everything's all set. Our retract height is three millimeters. That should be enough. I hit OK. 12 by 12. This is what we have. Now I'm going to go to the import image or trace image, and I'm going to select Gazelle 1. We'll hit that. And I have my stock photo that I have downloaded. And I'm going to use the stock settings. I'm going to hit trace image and accept it. I've changed nothing about the settings. It comes in as a group. First thing I'm gonna do is ungroup everything and delete the stuff at the bottom. We'll get rid of that. And now I'm gonna dive in and start to edit the image. I'm gonna make this my own art. Now, if I pull down with my selection window, I will select anything that remains fully inside of the window. If it doesn't get fully inside the window, it will not be selected. If I drag my window up, any outline that it touches, any piece of art that is touched by that box will be selected. You can use this to select the interior portions of things and delete details you don't want where I want to keep this outer outline. So right now I want the outer outline, but I do not want these inner details. I'm going to go about deleting all of those inner details. A couple different ways to do it. One, you can highlight it and hit delete. Or you can hold down the delete key and simply click items away. Your choice works a lot like trim and fusion 360. I can go ahead and just click away all of these inner details, different ways for you to work. Drag down, hit delete. Hey, a quick reminder here. My.carbide3d.com is full of all kinds of educational content from software to hardware, to projects, anything you're struggling with, Visit MyCarbide3D.com and reach out to us, support at Carbide3D.com if you're having a problem with your machine. We're here to help. All right, back to it. Let's deal with a few of these inconsistencies in our trace. Because it's a drawing, the trace will oftentimes grab both sides of a line and make a vector. This can present some challenges. So for instance, there are three different sections that are making up the outline of my art at the moment. I would like to have a complete outline and I'm gonna show you how to do that shortly, but I also would like these details to be connected in a better fashion. This is where the node editor comes in. First thing I'm gonna do is select both of these contours or vectors here, and I'm gonna go over to the edit and node edit. By zooming in, I can make it a little bit easier to right click and select that vector. I'm gonna cut it, left click, right click, cut vector, and you notice that this has gone purple. This is for an open vector. Anything in black is a closed vector. It has a beginning and an end that connect. Anything in purple is an open vector. Lots of times you'll import some art if you buy a file. People get a little bit sloppy with their files. If we now select one of these purple vectors on the left-hand side, you notice that there's this tiny one in the middle. We wanted to get rid of this, that's perfect. Let's go over to this other side. We'll note edit the other side as well, and we'll hit cut vector and cut vector. Same thing has occurred. This is our selection at the moment. This has turned purple on the outside. Everything is now purple. If we select both of those small sections 
and hit delete, we now have a wide open vector. If I select both of these, I do not have the option for join vectors. This is because the nodes are not close enough to relate to each other. So node edit once again, I'm gonna grab this node here. I'm gonna change the angle a little bit. I'm gonna bring it in and put it on top. I'm gonna to grab this one here. I'm gonna change its angle a little bit and I'm gonna drag it nearby. That should be close enough. It doesn't always have to be right on top. Once I hit done, there it is. Join vector has appeared. I can click join vector, give it a couple different clicks. It connected up there. The second click, it connected down here. And now we have a black vector around the outside. Two of the three sections are connected. What if I wanna connect this lower section to this upper section? I have a couple different areas it looks like we need to cut. So let's note edit, select both our vectors. We're gonna cut here, we're gonna cut here. I'm gonna go to this one and I'm gonna cut there and I'm gonna select that one and cut there. You notice they all have been cut apart. We now have these inner ones selected, hit done, delete those. We're now set up for the same process we just went through. I'll simply drag here and drag there, you can alter the angle a little bit. Remember, you are the artist. You can always mess with the art itself. I'll hit done, and now they are close enough. No, they are not. Let me get them a little bit closer. This is where the grid, snap to grid, you might want to turn it off or zoom in enough that you can drag them really close to one another. Now I can heal them. All right, now we're most of the way around here. Because this is a weird trace of a drawing, you can go and drive yourself mad trying to figure out how to make a complete outline of your object. You can go completely crazy tracing, okay, where does this go and where does it connect and intersections, outer sections. In this case, I think the inner details will look pretty good. So I just wanna utilize some of these inner details to accent my overall part. And you're the artist for any of this, so you can, alter pieces however you want. You can move them around. One thing I would like is a completed horn up here. Same method. Let me show you a slight variation on it. You notice we have these two sections here that connect to our main body that we've already made. So we wanna get rid of these. Let's get rid of all these little parts. And now we will select these guys, hit our node edit, and where to cut it becomes the question, right? We've got all this little swirly stuff inside. Let's select this one and cut it there. We'll select this node and cut it there. I wanna cut it right here, and I will cut it right there. You've seen me manipulating a number of nodes. The workflow is left click to select the node, right click to bring the drop down menu for the options with that node. If you wanna grab several, you're gonna left click and drag a box over a number of nodes, then you can drag them around, you can change their shape, use the smooth and unsmooth, that's a handy tool. All right, left click, right click, alter the nodes, and as always, experiment, get in and manipulate some things so you can learn. Let's get back again. Same method here, we can select the intersection, get rid of it, select those squirrelies, get rid of them. Now, these are very far apart, and I wanna kinda of maintain the angle of this horn. I may not wanna drag the node all the way up to here, so let's make a line. We can attach a line here and a line there. Hit done. I can attach a line here and a line there and hit done. Now I can also edit these guys the same as I would edit anything else. Let me select that and we're gonna hit S or smooth. It will give you either an option for an angle or just a standard point without any angles on it. So your choice there, I'm gonna drag it out just a little bit. Pretty happy with that angle. What about this angle here? This guy's a little bit off. So let me node edit this. We'll do the same thing. We'll give it a little bit of an outward drag. If you zoom all the way in, you can avoid some of the snapping or you can turn snapping off. It's up to you. The more you work with the program, the better you're going to get at determining what works for your particular needs on any given project. I'm gonna cut that down a little bit. How does that overall thing look? That looks not bad. 
Let's select all of these. And now let's heal. That's pretty good. I could fiddle with this even more. I could mess with the nodes. I could take some away, like smooth and unsmooth. Sometimes it's beneficial if you just kind of let the computer interpret it and then alter it slightly. Give yourself a little bit smoother of an angle on the inside. All up to you, the artist. So what have we accomplished? We have a complete outline. It still has some breaks in it, but it's more or less a complete outline. But I want all these to be the details, so I'm gonna to continue to add to this. I wanna have details inside and I wanna have an outline outside. This is where the offset path comes in. Offset vectors, I wanna do three millimeters outside of this selection. You're gonna see something interesting here though. I get a whole ton of extra lines because it's a double outline and I'm trying to produce a single line on the outside. That double outline is gonna produce all kinds of lines. They're very easy to get rid of. Simply hold shift, deselect the outer outline that I wanted and hit delete. Now what we're left with is the outer outline that we wanted. We have one complete outline, runs around the entirety of our design. This is useful for signs, for elements that you're gonna inlay on something, or in my case, making an ornament. I like all of this. Now, one other thing, I want to group all of the inner details into one group so I can machine them. I'm gonna select everything, and I'm again just gonna hold down shift and deselect that outer outline. And I'm gonna group it. Go over and hit group vectors. Now, anytime I grab anything on the inside, it will be selecting every detail on the inside of my design. We need to resize this. Now that we've come up with a format that we like, let's resize it. I generally will hold up a pair of calipers and pull them until I think I come up with a size that, that I like. And I do a lot of just ballpark figuring and then I make something and if I don't like the dimensions, I tweak it slightly. Here, when you hit resize, I know that my width of about 80 millimeters is gonna produce something that I want. So 80 millimeters, keep proportions. And now we've shrunk it down. So here is our finished design. Remember that when you did that outer outline and then you shrunk it, your outer outline now is a different relationship to those inner designs. So it's just one millimeter approximately apart between the two. If you wanted to maintain a three millimeter difference between the inside and the outside of your designs, you would have to redo the outer outline. You would have to once again, come in and select here and say, give me an outer outline, make it three millimeters outside and you would get the same application. I could do the same thing. I could deselect the outside, hit return. And now I have a three millimeter line outside, but I'm pretty happy with the one millimeter line. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that there. If this were an ornament, I would need to have a hanging hole, something where I could pass through a string to put on a tree. What if I make this radius two millimeters and where this hole should be to make the ornament hang straight up and down, I don't know. You have to make one and try it out. I can't tell you the weight of the head versus the weight of the butt of this particular antelope. You can only take your best guess. I'm gonna put it right there. It's gonna cut right through one of our details and that's okay. Or you can ungroup and you can deselect that one section that you wanna get rid of like so, you can regroup, you can select it and hit delete. There you go. I got rid of that one little guy. Maybe that's better, a little bit cleaner hole, nothing intersecting. Design is one half. Tool pathing is the other half of what you're gonna do in Carbide Create before you send it off to motion, before you go ahead and get to the machine to make it. In preparation for tool pathing, I wanna show you how to use layers to in a good effect when it comes to producing multiples of something. Grab our inner details, hit the L key. Let's add a layer. We're gonna call it inner details. The more time you spend labeling your layers, labeling your tool paths, the more organized and readable your files are going to be, whether you're selling files or whether you are coming back later to utilize elements of this file for a later project, which I do all the time. I'm always thinking back to previous projects and grabbing things from those projects to bring forward into new and creative builds. Inner details. What you have to do then is say, move selection to layer and hit okay. All of our inner details are now red. That's what we want. Let's select our outer outline. Again, the L key. Let's create another layer. We're gonna call it outer outlines. And it's plural. 
You do notice that, right? And let's change the color. You just click the color and we can change it to green. We can again say move selection to layer and hit okay. The outer outlines are in green. The inner sections are in red. How very Christmassy. You'll notice that the hole is still on the default layer, on that black layer. Let's change that. Let's do it by renaming that layer. We'll just call it holes. We don't have to move anything because it's already there. All right, onto our tool paths. I want to create first some details inside. I want to carve all of these details and you could do this a few different ways. You could do it with an MC etcher, which is useful if you've done paint on your acrylic first, or if you're going to edge light your acrylic and you just want to score it so that when it's edge lit, it lights up. All of that's definitely possible. Here, I'm gonna get a little bit more aggressive. I'm gonna use a 501 PCB mill, one of my favorite tools. And I'm gonna use the contour toolpath and I'm gonna select by layer. Our inner details are what we wanna carve. And I'll hit okay. Now I'm gonna edit my tool. I'm gonna to say soft plastic here because of the way that I'm doing it. Hard plastic is the description for acrylic. And when we get back to the cutouts, you're gonna see that. But I'm gonna use the 501. And the speeds, I'm gonna crank the speeds up just a bit. I'm gonna crank up to about 750. I'm gonna go up to 500 for a plunge because I'm gonna utilize ramping. I'm gonna increase the speed of my end mill. And our depth per pass, I'm gonna move that up as well to 0.25 millimeters. I'm gonna hit okay. Inside left is what I'm gonna start with. And our depth, I'm gonna to move to 0.35 millimeters. Now what I've done here is I've actually created a finishing pass by manipulating my depth per pass and my overall max depth. I've created effectively a two pass tool path. It's gonna pass first at 0.25 and the second pass is gonna be a 0.1 millimeter pass to get to 0.35. This is how you can create finishing passes in Create quite easily. With just a little bit of math, you can set up a finishing tool path pass of 0.1 millimeters. When you're cutting with a V-bit, be it metal, wood, or composites, having that finishing pass is beneficial because of the dynamics of the cutter. V-bits are incredibly useful if you want to increase your understanding of how to utilize the V-carve toolpath as well as the advanced V-carve toolpath with these bits. We have a terrific video covering the making of stars. The link's in the description. Check it out. Back to our project, we're gonna call this toolpath inner details. Inside left is the initial setting, but it does not function well because of that double line and the way that that trace interprets all of those lines, we have to come up with a different solution. Check this out, no offset, hit okay. Now it's simply gonna follow each one of these lines all the way around. Let's take a look at our simulation. What this does create is this little ridge line in the middle, you see that? There's a little ridge line all the way through here. I don't care that it's there. This is part of just experimenting with materials. I only know this works because I've already done it. And I didn't know at the time how it was gonna turn out. It turns out fine. It looks good. I'm happy with it. It's not about being perfect. It's not about knowing exactly what's gonna happen every time. It's about the willingness to experiment. Let's hide our simulation. Let's change the depths a little bit. I'm gonna go just 0.25 total. And I'm gonna put this down to 0.15 closer to its original depth per pass and hit okay. Same one tenth of a millimeter finishing pass. We'll show our simulation and we're getting a little less penetration in there. I think that'll work better. There we go. Those definitely look like the kind of details I would wanna have on an ornament or some other decorative item. That looks pretty good. Hiding the simulation, let's deal with the whole cutouts here. So again, nothing selected. I'm gonna hit pocket, select by layer. I'm gonna use the holes, hit okay. We're gonna edit our tool. Now with acrylic, it is a hard plastic. I'm gonna utilize a single flute cutter. Whenever possible, use a single flute with acrylic. One, because it's hard and brittle like a metal. Two, because it's prone to melting like a plastic. Single flutes excel at fighting those two factors. I'm gonna slightly alter my cutting parameters. And yeah, I just kind of wing it. That's how it goes. When it comes to feeds and speeds, we give you the basics inside of Carbide Create. This is meant as a basis from which you can begin to chart and understand your specific projects, your materials, what works perfectly for whatever it is you're putting in your machine. The more you chart, the more you create tool libraries as well as specific tools, the easier your workflow is going to be down the line. To learn how to create those tool libraries, go to my.carbide3d.com. Inside of Create Basics, you'll find tool libraries. Give that a watch and then try it yourself. Now let's get back to our tool pathing. Depth per pass, 0.63, that's fine. Cut that down a little bit, 0.5. I hit okay. 
Now I wanna go to a thickness plus 0.1 millimeters. This is my favorite measurement when it comes to cutouts or cut throughs. T for thickness, whatever you set up in your job setup to one hundredth position and plus one tenth of a millimeter. That generally does a very nice job of getting through any material accurately while still cutting it out. And I'll say this is the holes and I wanna utilize ramping, 15 degrees, hit okay. So that'll cut through our hole here. If you have ramping, use it. It's particularly good at taking stress off of small end mills with the plunge into material. Also, you've just seen me use the expression editor here. We have an outstanding video detailing how to use that expression editor over on my.carbide3d.com. Check it out there for more information. The link's in the description. All right, what's left? Our outlines are left. Let's do contour, select by layer, outer outlines. We're gonna use that same 1 8 We're gonna edit the cutting parameters again. So 1200, 20,000, 500. We'll cut 0.5 again. We'll make it all similar. We're gonna cut outside right. We're gonna cut T plus 0.1 millimeters through. I'm not gonna add any tabs because I'm gonna use the super hold kit. I'm gonna ramp in and these are our outer outlines. You notice everything's plural, right? Let's show our simulation. There we go. I think that's exactly what I wanted. Now, a couple of things here. This is close to what I want. If I want this oriented with the antelope facing to the left, I need to think about my design tab. And I need to think about the fact that with acrylic, you want to engrave it, you want to paint it, you want to cut it from the backside so that your opaque or clear acrylic has that shine on the front and all the decoration on the back. That applies to when you utilize the MC Etcher and then edge light it. You want all of the detail work done on the inside of the acrylic. Remember to design your entire project first, then flip it. This is particularly key when you have text. You're definitely gonna forget sometime. I've had it happen. All right, let's get back to it. Now, what if I wanna have a whole bunch of these? I wanna rep these out. I wanna give them away. I wanna have them as decorations on presents. I've done all these things. I wanna duplicate this. I could do Command C, Command V, Command V, Command V, and I could move these around. And I could try and nest them properly, make sure that they're all done right. And I could see, can I get four in here? Maybe I can. Right there, I could probably, I could probably squeeze in four. That would probably work. That's one way to do it. Let me show you another way. Use the array tool, select everything, select our linear array, and let's go number of rows. This is gonna be in columns. Let's see, number of columns, let's go four. Number of rows, let's go two. And there we have it. Now, what if I want to bring them closer together? How about two millimeters apart? It's still not close enough because it's measuring from this ear to this tail. So that's the two millimeters that you're getting. Let's utilize a negative number. Let's start with negative two. That's yeah, not bad. All right, how about negative 10? Now we're tucking them inside. Look at that. So now it's negative 10 from the edge of this tail to the edge of this ear, but we're not overlapping any of our cuts. I actually wanna have a little bit more vertical space. Hit okay. Perfect. Look at that. We don't wanna group our output. And in this case, duplicating toolpaths doesn't matter. Because we're machining by layer, the only operation that's affecting any of those deer because they're done on the holes layer is a pocket. So everything's all screwed up. Look at this. This is a mess. And you might be saying to yourself, what is going on? Why is this happening? This is where machine by layer actually makes things pretty easy. When we have maintained layers upon duplication, which we will eventually like Adobe has, this will be automatic, but it's not that hard anyway. Watch, I'll select my inners by holding shift. Each one of those inner groups, hit the L key, move it to our inner details layer, hit okay. Now let's select our outer edges. Again, same thing, hold down shift, grab all the outer edges. This is where machine by layer really shines. L, move to outer outlines, hit okay. All I've done is move things to layers. I go back to my tool paths, I show my simulation, and look at that, I have eight identical parts without having to do any more tool pathing. So this file's ready to go to the machine, all set, these are gonna get made. Now, 
Let me show you where this kind of file, and once you set it up this way, can be incredibly useful for batching out items. Let's say I wanted to do the similar type operation, except with a new design. People might think I would start a new file and then bring it in and then remake the layers. And all. Don't do any of that. Don't go remaking anything. Simply do this. Save as, we'll call it machine by layer two. First step, delete everything. Yeah, get rid of it all. Now in this case, you might wanna trace something new in or whatever you wanna do, you're gonna bring in another design. I'm simply gonna to go to our library and I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna look for snowflakes or something here since it's the holiday season. Let's bring in this snowflake here, number 15. There, not a bad design. I'm gonna resize it, I'll bring it down. Remember we had 80 millimeters. We thought 80 millimeters wasn't bad for a ornament type thing. I can bring this down to the bottom and there's no node editing needed. However, I would like a clean outer outline. In our last design, I really liked the one millimeter outline once it was all shrunk down. So offset path, one millimeter outside, apply just as we did on our last design. And there we go, there's our clean outline. We again ended up with some other little details inside. And this is where things can get interesting. Maybe I just wanna leave those details there. Maybe I like that. It looks like a sunburst inside of a snowflake. That uh, looks intriguing. Or you can just get rid of them the same way we did. This is where you, the artist, continue to get to make those decisions. All right, I'm getting rid of them. Now it looks just like a snowflake with an outline. From my previous projects, I know I'm gonna need a hanger hole at the top. Now I need to design that and then boolean it into that outer outline, which we just created. Two millimeters for our inner hole, four millimeters for the outer. And now boolean the outer into that outline you just created and you have the perfect setup for an ornament. At this point, we've created one. Now we need to create multiples once again. Step one, let's reestablish some groups. So first of all, highlight the whole thing. Secondly, deselect that outer outline. Next, deselect the hole up top. We also are gonna utilize that later. These are all of our inner details. Let's create a group here. And I refer to them as inner details because we're gonna use that same moniker. Now, I have those inner details as a group. I have the outer and the whole separate from each other. Let's go ahead and create multiples of these. Command C, Command V, Command V, I have three of them. Very good. Now, next I'll need to create some more groups for the sake of alignment. Use of groups with alignment can be very powerful to streamlining your designs, especially when you're making multiples out of something. I'm gonna take these guys and I'm gonna use the alignment tools and I'm gonna align them vertically. And then I'm gonna take all of them again and I'm gonna align them horizontally, distribute center, which is a new thing we have inside Carbide Create. It's a brand new tool. It is horizontally distribute center and horizontally distribute vertical. These tools are handy, handy tools. Definitely use them when it comes to designing multiples of things. With that done, grab them all and move them over just a little bit. More or less centered, very good. Now I'll grab everything as one group. We'll go to the array tool and we'll tell the array we want three rows, one column, and it's gonna be X spacing of three, Y spacing of six. I've already established this and it's created my sheet of snowflakes. You have to find where those settings are for you. If you tell them centers, everything's overlapped. If you tell it gap between, then you have a nice setup. Definitely spend time experimenting with the settings and doing different layouts. You can make simple shapes and try layouts. There's no substitute for experience. Now I have nine of these on a sheet. Here's where we need to work with our layers right quick because if we go to tool paths and we show our simulation, everything is on that holes layer. So this is all we're getting. Let's change that. It's super simple to make the alteration. We're once again down to manipulating groups. I wanna group all of the inner layer groups into a larger group containing all nine inner layers. Then I'm gonna take the outsides, the cutouts, and I'm gonna group all nine of those. Following that, I will select everything, deselect the inners, deselect the outers, and take the holes and make them a group of their own. Now I can take those details and assign them to the appropriate layer. Move the inner details to the inner detail layer, move the outer cutouts to that outer cutout layer, and the holes, they're gonna stay on the layer they're on because they're in black, and that is the holes layer. With that done, back to the tool pathing. In the tool pathing menu, I've done nothing. I have all the same tools, all the same feeds and speeds, everything that was set up for that same sheet of stock, show simulation, and look at that, exactly what we want. 
One more alteration because I can't help it. I know from experience that if you put holes in things, it tends to lighten designs. Now, what about this center section here? This is where you, the designer, need to play. I'm going to go through and ungroup a few of these and decide to make a new design. We'll see which one sells better. With the ungrouping done, let's grab some of these center holes. Grab all of those, hit layer, and I can move them to the holes layer. Move selection to layer. Let's jump back over the tool pathing and look at our simulation. And now we have some contrast in our design. And we've done it in seconds. We've created a new design with holes in it. Maybe that'll work better. You can do a little A-B testing between these two with your customers, your clients. You can do it online, Instagram, Facebook, ask people which they prefer. Get a little market research going, having made just a few parts. These parts are also now ready to go to the machine. We've covered image trace, node editing, creation of layers, machine by layer. All that's done, it must be time for the cutting montage. You've made it to the end of another long form video and I hope it was informative and helpful. One note before we go, do some experimenting. Experiment with materials, with methods, make things when you don't have to. The more that you do that, the better the stuff will be when you have a project, an order, something you want to make. You'll have a whole bunch more information to call upon and utilize in your next design. Also, be sure and talk to us here in the comments. I want to know where you're at with your CNC making experience. The more you talk to us, the better our content can get. We'll find you with things that you find useful. And we'll be back with more information, ideas, and inspiration.